Welcome back to the Stephen A. Smith Show right here over the digital airways of YouTube. Before I get back to some tweets and calls and all of this stuff, I got to touch on this subject right here. A recent Wall Street Journal opinion piece entitled The High Price of Democrats Anti-Trump Lawfare, written by Daniel Henninger, spoke of how most Americans believe the rule of law is better than the law of the jungle, but how that could change. According to Henninger, the newest buzzword in politics is lawfare, or using the legal system as a weapon against a political opponent. Henninger questions how many lawsuits, court motions, and judgments against Donald Trump the Democratic Party can actually chow down on. He also ponders about the high price the American system may pay for all of this in excess. Let me tell you something. It was a great opinion piece. I completely agree with Daniel Henninger of the Wall Street Journal, the opinion piece that he wrote in there, because we've got to get to a point where we're saying when's enough's enough. Donald Trump made a very salient point. I know you don't hear me say that often, but it's true. He made a very salient point a couple of weeks ago or I think it was in the immediate aftermath of Super Tuesday when he was talking about President Biden and he was saying, you know, come beat me. Stop trying to use the legal system in order to pull it off. Now, obviously, President Biden would say he has nothing to do with me. He's the president of the United States. He's not the prosecution in Georgia. He's not the prosecutor in New York. Okay, he has nothing to do with those things. So he may say, maybe it's true. But I find it very, very difficult to believe that everybody on the Democratic side is innocent. I mean, when you look at the inordinate amount of charges that are coming Trump's way, I mean, when is enough enough? E. Jean Carroll awarded $83.3 million in a defamation suit against Trump. Okay? By the way, New York judge uh, Arthur Ejeron ordered Trump to pay a total of $450 million in a civil fraud trial over valuations of his net worth. New York State Attorney Letitia James says if the massive bond isn't posted, she'll seize Mr. Trump's New York buildings. This is according to the article in the Wall Street Journal. We know about what's happening in Georgia. Fulton County District Attorney Fannie Willis, all right, regardless of her own stuff going on with her and, 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 and somebody else, Mr. Wade, who's also an attorney that she utilized to go after Trump, but that's a different subject for another day, what they've got going on here right now. She goes after 18 other defendants for violating the state's racketeer influenced the Corrupt Organizations Act in connection with the 2020 presidential election. The presiding judge dismissed six of the 41 counts. This is all according to the article here. You got Colorado, Maine, and Illinois took various legal actions to ban Mr. Trump from the 2024 presidential ballot. Efforts recently blocked by a unanimous Supreme Court decision. They got a 6-3 majority, six conservatives, three liberals, but unanimously... They blocked this effort by Colorado, Maine, and Illinois. You got the special counsel, Jack Smith, going after Trump on trial for a set of federal charges, one over possession of classified documents, another for the former president's actions the day of the 2021 Capitol riot. Okay, that issue is still up in the air. And in the meantime, we've got a situation where a guy by the name of Robert Hur, a classified document special counsel, investigating President Biden, ultimately exercised prosecutorial discretion, saying the current president isn't exonerated, but won't be prosecuted, leaving the situation involving Joe Biden to the court of public opinion. Ladies and gentlemen, there's so much to get into. I'm not going to do it. I'm going to simply say this. Trump is kicking the Democrats, you know what? 91 charges, four indictments, 91 counts against him. He's been impeached twice. And he still ran away with the GOP nomination. It was a cakewalk. DeSantis couldn't beat him. Christie couldn't beat him. Nikki Haley couldn't beat him. Vivek Ramaswamy couldn't beat him. They can't touch him. And you still, we're still waiting for him to go to jail. We're still waiting for him because supposedly he's done so much. Russian collusion, remember all of that? We're still waiting for the jail. We're still waiting for the guilty verdict. We're still waiting for him to be incarcerated. We're still waiting for him to be seen in zebra stripes. You can't touch him. And now he's thrown this salvo. He said, yo, why don't you come beat me? 
Stop engaging in lawfare and using the legal system to push your political agenda. Come beat me. That's what he did. This is, listen, I do sports most of the time. That's the kind of language we want to hear, ain't it? Can you beat him or not? You going to beat him? Four different polls show that Joe Biden is trailing, that Trump is gaining momentum. You can look at the right and talk about their commitment to Biden's cognitive decline narrative. The fact of the matter is, in half of America's eyes, Trump is seen as damn near criminal. And he's still collecting more campaign dollars and more votes. He is the GOP nominee. I believe it's his daughter-in-law that's about to be the head of the Republican National Committee. If she isn't already, are you going to stop him or not? This article is a very profound one. The high price of Democrats' anti-Trump lawfare. Because when the legal system is utilized this way and people see you getting away with trying to cause all of this ruckus towards him as opposed to simply beating him at the polls, that gives them additional fodder to question the legal system. And once they do that, it gives them a significant license to be lawless and to engage in lawlessness, which will explain some of the mayhem and the nonsense we've been seeing in the streets of America that would have never been tolerated, even as late and as recently as Barack Obama being in office, or George W. Bush for that matter, or Bill Clinton for that matter. The nonsense that we're seeing in the streets today easily could be attributed to a level of lawlessness that people don't care about committing because they're seeing our politicians manipulate the system in such a way that they don't like it because it reminds them of things they've always felt about our government to begin with, which is, by the way, what makes Trump sound like he had a lot of sense when he was comparing himself to the plight of black folks, even though we know better. Anybody black knows that ain't a problem Trump had. But he talked about being a victim. He talked about the system being rigged against him. He talked about the powers that be wielding and influencing a level of power just to make him uncomfortable for their own bidding as opposed to it being legitimate. And you know what his ultimate argument is? The GOP nomination. Because he, if, if he is all of these things, why should he be allowed to be the GOP nominee? He's going to use that and say, I must be innocent. It's them. It's not me. And at least 74 million people, based on the numbers stemming from the 2020 election, are going to side with him. What about the 81 plus million that once sided with Biden? You sure they're going to show up to help him beat Trump with the way things are in the streets of America right now? I don't know. I don't know.